Will the results of this upcoming election either tank the housing market or send it to new heights? And does the data show whether a Republican or a Democrat gets elected? Who is better for the housing market? We're gonna go over all of that and more on today's episode. And if you've never tuned into the show before, hi, I'm Josh Alexander, your local Orange County real estate agent, and I've been helping teach both buyers and sellers how to successfully navigate the Orange County housing market for almost 10 years now. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so today we're gonna go over the four most important points points that you need to know about both leading up to an election as well as what happens the year after an election. So let's go ahead and start with what you can expect in the housing market leading up to election day. So number one, interest rates. So if you look at interest rates since 1980 leading up to an election, eight of the last 11 election years, interest rates have dropped. And if you follow this channel or watch the market, you know that's already happened as well. So interest rates have dropped from 7.5%. Right now they're hovering around 6.2%, making homes a lot more affordable and leading to more buyers entering the market recently. Now the second data point that impacts the housing market is how many sales are happening leading up to an election. So typically about two months prior to an election, you start seeing sales drop off more than they usually do. So during the fall, you start seeing the amount of sales happening throughout the United States start to decrease anyway, but leading up to an election year, you see an average of about 5% decrease more than normal in the amount of homes being sold. And that often has to do with the uncertainty around the election. So people are uncertain and when they're uncertain, they don't make any major moves, especially financial moves until after the election, which is why you typically see the amount of transactions happening in the market drop when you're going through election years. So speaking of the number of sales happening, let's go ahead and now shift to what you can typically expect to see after an election year. So when you go look at sales, nine out of the last 11 elections going all the way back to 1980, sales have gone up. And this makes sense because a lot of people hold off putting their home on the market again because they're uncertain. As soon as the election happens, whether Republican wins or Democrat wins, people become more certain and homes start going on the market. So you typically see more homes listed in the months of November as well as December following an election year than you usually do and throughout the rest of the year as well. So based on this data and really more importantly, what's happening in the current housing market, I would expect this trend to continue. We should see more sales happen in 2025 than we saw in 2024. And one of the main reasons is because 2024 will probably go down as the second lowest amount of sales that have happened in the last 30 years, at least in United States. So it's really not hard to get above where we are right now. Okay, so now to the last data set, which is probably what most of you are concerned with, is what do home prices do after a typical election year? So if you look at the data back to 1992, seven out of the last eight elections, the year afterwards, home prices went up. And the only time they went down, you guessed it, right during the Great Recession. So it makes sense they went down. Every other year, whether a Republican or a Democrat gets into the White House, home prices almost always go up the year afterwards. Now, with all this being said, does an election typically impact what happens in the housing market? To be honest, not really that much. So after looking at all these data points, yes, they give you a general idea of what typically happens in a market after an election, but really what's going to be more important with what's going to happen next year is what the current supply and demand numbers look like in the housing market and how the economy is doing right now. So if you look at most economic projections for the housing market right now, they're saying that yes, next year we will have a lot more sales than we have this year and next year in the majority areas of the United States, home prices are also predicted to continue going up because interest rates are predicted to continue slowly going down, increasing demand. And even though we will also see more sellers in the marketplace next year, supply is still going to be lower than demand in most places in the United States, leading to a lot of areas having home prices increase over the next 12 months. So really, if you've been thinking of buying or selling a home and you're trying to figure out, should I do it before the election, after the election? In my honest opinion, what really matters most is what your individual circumstance is because maybe it does make sense for you to buy or sell a home now, maybe it doesn't, but it all comes down to your goals, what your needs are, and if it's going to make financial sense for you and your family to do so moving forward. So the best way to really figure that out is talk to your trusted real estate agent, talk to your lender, and see if the numbers make sense right now because ultimately no one knows what the housing market is going to do for sure with 100% certainty. 
So you always want to make a decision based on the facts you know now and not be a speculator to try to figure out what may or may not happen in the housing market. Because for most of you, you're trying to buy a home that you're going to live in with you and your family for five plus years. So as long as you can find a home in a neighborhood that you love with a payment that you can afford and it's someplace you can see yourself living in for the long term, over the long term, housing has always been a great investment. So it really comes down to when is the best time for you personally to purchase a home based on your own finances and not really looking as much to what the market is doing in any specific day and trying to predict what the market may or may not do in the future because you're always going to end up losing in the long run if you just continue to wait and not take any action. Now, if you have been trying to decide if you should buy or sell a home right now, and you'd like some more information on what the housing market is actually doing right now, I highly recommend if you're watching this on YouTube, check out my latest housing market update I just did, I put out for the month of October, that gives you a really good idea of exactly what to expect as we head through the rest of the year. And if you're thinking of buying a home specifically and aren't familiar with the new commission rules, I definitely recommend you check out this video right here, again, if you're watching it on YouTube, because that's gonna give you all the information that you need to know so you can confidently go in to purchase a home and know exactly what to expect. So until next week, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you on the next show. Bye, everybody.